call this meeting Friday, Friday February 25th, 2018, EDA Board of Directors to order. Uh, first uh, order of business, are, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to, or let's do, I need a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> motion to approve the minutes of April 2018. <clears throat> Second. Second. Any comments on those minutes? We saw. Seems like that's what we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor of those minutes? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Then we move on to the financials of April 2018. Set the motion. So moved. I'll set the second. Third second. Okay. Second. Okay. Any comments on the financials? Any um, of those big numbers you want to explain? We had our auditors in here two weeks ago to start the audit, and then we will be back September 10th. <coughs> Any other comments? As always, we have several projects that are moving money in and out. All right, hearing none. All those in favor of accepting the financials of April 2018? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, we have some updates. Uh, Mr. Stanley from the County of Warren. Mr. Chair, members of the board, a few things to report on. Uh, this morning, the Development Review Committee met this week. Um, they discussed projects in the county, including a proposed contractor storage yard on Winters Court off Fairground Road, that's part of the Walker Brew property. Uh, I think they're in the process of trying to get something um, constructed so that when an opportunity comes up, they can move quickly to address it. Uh, proposed alterations to the Starbucks Urban Common Shopping Center. Uh, Michael's opened this week. I saw a crowd there last time. People moving in that building. That's big news. Um, uh, also, a request for RV sales business. The committee also discussed town projects, including a proposed brewery on Water Street. That's uh, Steve Lockhart's building. Uh, the applicant presented the plan. The committee offered several comments and some feedback on the proposal. Uh, also, a proposed shoe store will be open on Main Street next to Town Hall. Uh, an update on inspections at the Front Royal Brewery and uh, parking and possible uses for Busy Bee Store on Jackson Street. Uh, the committee will meet again on June 27. Uh, as you know, the county is in the middle of its uh, reassessment process, which we do every four years. The Wingate Appraisal, which is our contract, <coughs> working in the Shenandoah, Blue Mountain, Bentonville, and Shenandoah Shores areas the last couple of weeks. And uh, we'll also be working in the Benny's Beach Grove Farm Road area. They're on track to move around the 1st of June into town limits and start in town. Um, the current plan is to have the initial property visits completed by the end of September. The next step is to visit as necessary all properties where building permits have occurred since they started the assessment last July. Uh, the amount of time necessary for that phase will depend on the volume of permits. They expect that to occur during October. So that's anybody who may have added a, a deck to their house or finished a basement, anything like re renovated the kitchen, remodeled it, uh, those types of things, they'll come back and address all those uh, changes uh, during October. Also during October, Wingate will be running edits and data reports to assure the values are good and error-free as they can prior to mailing notices of assessment change. Notices will be mailed around the end of October and will show the hearing location dates and times of hearings, the proposed assessment for this year, the previous, I think, two assessments, uh, the percentage of change from the current assessment to the new assessment, as well as uh, the county's current tax levy. Uh, administrative hearings also knows the assessor's hearings should begin at or near the 1st of November. They expect the hearings and reviews to take uh, most of the month of November with about uh, two weeks of advertised hearing dates. Owners will typically be notified of the result of their appeal during December, which is when they'll run the assessment books. By law, they have to turn those books over to the clerk of court and commission of revenue uh, by December 31st, so that'll wrap up that entire process. And also wrap it up in time for us to begin budget deliberations for next year. You may have noticed uh, the county published um, uh, 
uh, list of delinquent real estate taxpayers in the Sentinel and the NBD this, uh, last, this past week. Um, they've had a lot of folks into the Treasurer's Office uh, based on those ads. Our Tourism Advisory Committee uh, met on May 9th and discussed uh, available funding, budget, and wayfinding signing system. Um, the committee will meet again on June 6th. Uh, from <laughs> Golf Club, we're continuing to uh, evaluate one proposal we have. We've also got a court date, and Mr. Uh, Whitten will be representing the county uh, in June. Um, there's a provision in the original deed that said that the property would be dedicated to the residents of Front Royal Warren County for use as public recreation, including golf. And one of the things that we're asking the court to do is remove that language about including golf. So it would be able to be able to use for public recreation, but we would not have to operate a golf course. Um, project updates, Resty Jeffries. We're down to the final few punch list <laughs> items at Resty and uh, hope to have that completed. We thank the EDA for their help in uh, uh, financing that project in the Market Tax Credit Program. Our playground project, uh, as of last week, the playground phases one and two have been open to the students. We were out there the other day in the field day, and we're very excited to be out there playing on the new playground. Um, we'll be working on the last few items here in the next couple of weeks. I think uh, Greg and I have talked. I think we're probably looking at a complete ribbon cutting ground uh, type of event in August with next school year. Uh, Rivermont Fire Station, uh, it's meeting on May 1st with a new contract amendment with Mosley to complete the construction documents for the project. Um, we hope to be able to put that project out to bid by late summer. Um, we're also have a bid out right now for a well to serve the facility. We'll go ahead and drill the well and make sure we've got an adequate work before we bid the project. Health and Human Services Complex, um, We've awarded the contract uh, to Juniper Construction for improvements to portions of that building to accommodate the Registrar's Office and the Brighter Futures Alternative School Program. That program is currently housed in the Northwestern Community Services Building on Chrysler Roads. This will allow Greg and his staff to consolidate both of their uh, larger alternative ed programs under one roof. It will allow for greater, I guess, uh, certain resources staff. and staff. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we're pushing hard to get that completed by August, if, if not when school starts, soon, soon thereafter. Um, Shangri-La Revenue Sharing Project, we're um, in the process of working to get a box culvert delivered to uh, um, rebuild uh, that section of road and bridge and turn that road over to the state system. And uh, VDOT's work on the Lakefront Rural Revenue Sharing Project. Um, last page, our Morley Solid Revenue Sharing Project, uh, thanks to Jennifer and the EDA again, uh, for helping us with that project. Um, all we really have left to do is final milling, paving, and striping. And I think in the next couple weeks that should occur. Um, and that's kind of timed out with um, Royal Farms is shooting, I think, for mid-June completion. So we've got to get all that um, work done and be ready for them. Um, Morgan Ford Bridge, um, they've got till June 1st to be wrapped up. Anybody in the Rockland area, and a few of you, um, Billy probably mostly, but uh, we did not flood out during the no, we rain. Did. We got yeah, a foot. <coughs> foot. Um, but uh, hopefully they'll be able to complete the project by June 1st. We've got a ribbon cutting tentatively scheduled for June 11th at 10 a.m. So please mark your calendars for that if you're available. And we had a, lastly, we had a um, public hearing on the uh, preliminary design for the Happy Creek Road project. That's the project from town limits over the Norfolk Southern Railroad tracks down under I-66 to Kansas Run Road. It's about a $10 million project. That was uh, what they call smart scale, so it's fully funded by VDOT. And um, I probably had 20 or so people show up at the public hearing and make comments and uh, people got to see the new school. But uh, um, hopefully that project will be off and running here. They'll be able to start right away at work here by the end of the year. So with that, they have to answer any questions. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. one. Um, I just want to make sure I understood you correctly. Could you speak a little bit more to why we would be omitting the use of the country? I'm trying to understand that the golf course, why you would take away the available uses. So right now it says we have to use golf. We have to use golf. have to use golf. I did not understand. It, it says we can use it for public recreation. We have to use it for public recreation, including golf. So it has to include mm -hmm. So we're going to delete the language including golf. That's our request. Still, still could. 
Still could be. I, that's what I'm trying to understand. <coughs> but we're, we're not talking about the message, but not talking about the message. So is there any, uh, still any talk about putting in a recycle center on the other side of uh, um, Calhoun? There is, um, and we've actually, um, in the process of finalizing the site plan there at Houseville, um, I would hope by this fall we could probably start doing some site work on it. But just we've gotten through, we've got VDOT entrance approval. Where is it? It's about maybe between a quarter mile to a half mile south, coming down, back to Front Royal from the Houseville intersection uh, on the right before we get to Farm River. We've got about two to three acres right there that purchased for that purpose. And that would include all, because right now we have no recycling at that location, full recycling, like, say, London. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stanley. Appreciate that. Our town manager, Joe. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. What are you today? <coughs> Start of a three day weekend. Uh, I'm just going to go over briefly a few of these projects. Some of them haven't changed uh, <coughs> since the uh, last meeting. Um, just to start off with our Route 522 uh, corridor project, we're basically at a standstill at this point. Uh, we're waiting back for the summer from when we hear about what the abortion gas lights and tensions are. Um, we're still continually working on our CDBG. Um, we had requested an additional time for negotiations. Um, as everybody's aware, we requested a million dollars for that grant. We only received 700000 so uh, we there was a little bit of delay working on the budget and determining what we were going to tackle with that 700000 um, So once the negotiation phase is done, which is mid-June, well, the time clock will start for the two years to, to do the facade program and everything else that's in, included in that grant. Uh, Crescent Road Bridge uh, replacement. I'm happy to say that we finally have a start date of June 4th. Um, we've issued out all the public notices to tell uh, the community that we're going to have that bridge closed from June 4th to September 4th. Uh, we're hoping that we finish early, um, but we're looking at the full scope of the project with the contractor stating uh, it looks like it uh, should uh, take no more than three, but that's what we're planning for. Uh, Crescent Road Trail Project, it is basically complete minus the bus shelter. Uh, we will be working on that bus shelter in the next couple weeks. Uh, that will close that project out, but what we're doing also concurrently that we just started this week is putting additional curb and gutter on the other side of Chrysler Road before we do the paving after school let out so that we can complete that road and make it uh, a little bit more uh, appealing. Uh, Hecker Creek Phase 2, uh, we are still working with VDOT to release the funds, <coughs> funds from Phase 1 for that we can utilize that for the design work. Uh, the designs that we have for Happy Creek Phase 2 and 3 are 10 plus years old. They have metrics on it. Um, they're not up to standard, so we're working on that as well. Um, so we're moving that along. Uh, I'm happy to say finally we have some really good traction here at the IT Federal site. Obviously, um, we have a word of contract for the lift station and all the other water and sewer infrastructure for the Lot 6 uh, to GV Fultz. Um, and then we also opened up our bids for the first phase of West Main out here, and uh, GB Fultz as well won that. Uh, so once we get all those contracts executed with GB Fultz, uh, we're going to have another, uh, we'll have a pre-construction meeting, and uh, my next report at the next month I should have some better ideas of start dates, completion dates, and what kind of thing we're looking at on that point. <coughs> Uh, the police department uh, right across the street, we're moving along very well. We did, you know, we did hit a delay in the beginning of the project due to soil conditions. And then obviously the weather, the weather didn't cooperate earlier in the year and obviously we lost a week almost this couple weeks ago due to the weather. Uh, we're about 45% complete. Um, we're still on target right now um, for December uh, 31st deadline. Um, Wash and gas and light, obviously, uh, wash and gas and light are conducting three <coughs> studies. And um, from my, uh, from what I've been told, they won't be going back to their board for any further action until this summer, hopefully June or July. So at this 
point, we're just at a standstill waiting for them to do their due diligence. And um, Westminster Sidewalk, basically we're at a uh, waiting point before we can advertise that project, which is October 25th. And uh, besides that, I know it's kind of a fast report, but a lot of things haven't updated from the last month, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions. I just, I have one about the workstation. Mm -hmm. Um, it says it's to provide services to lot six. Is this being designed to provide services to more than just? Oh lot yeah, six? it is. Okay. It is. It's just referenced in there that that is a key component for lot six. Okay. Yes. So it will, it'll be large enough for the first phase. Right, and I, I don't know those exact numbers, but it was designed that it would be a long time before we had to put up the other station okay. on the other side of the property. Okay. <coughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, correct that on my next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. As always, there's a lot of things going on in the town and the county. Chamber update. Mickey. Good morning, everybody. I will make it my mission to make my report even shorter than Joe's. I mean, it's a holiday weekend, so I'm sure we're all trying to get out and enjoy beautiful sunshine. Uh, a couple of things um, happening in June, actually more than a couple. Uh, on June 7th, um, there's a couple of meetings that you guys may be interested in. First of all, um, I've been working with a group uh, to develop the Warren County Artisans Trail, and they are actually having a sip and learn event from 5.30 until 7 at the Vine and Leaf. So you can come and learn more about that trail and what it, um, what the potential is for um, increasing visibility of our artisans and our farmers and folks here in Front Royal and Warren County. It's a really exciting project and I encourage you to either attend the event or log on to Artisans Trail of Virginia to learn more about the program. Um, and then at 6 p.m. that same evening there will be a town business forum um, and I encourage all of you to consider attending that as well. There's a number of topics that will be discussed, one of which um, seems to be uh, very of, of interest to just about everybody, and that's the use of the gazebo for special events. So I think there'll be some productive conversation on that, and I would encourage you guys to consider attending that. Um, on June 19th, we will be hosting a job fair at the Holiday Inn. Uh, that's in response to requests from a number of our members who are, you know, of course, it's not, it's not a problem that's unique to Front Royal and Warren County, but folks are having trouble um, hiring individuals and finding folks who want to work and finding qualified individuals. So we're hoping to help a little bit with that problem with the job fair. Uh, that will be from 3 until 7. Uh, we do have a couple of businesses this month that are doing grand openings and ribbon cuttings, one of which is Front Royal Premier Copiers. That is on June 13th at noon um, at their location that they are actually leasing from the EDA. Uh, they are um, really excited to be in their own storefront. They've grown, gone from a home-based business to having their own storefront, um, and they were also awarded Entrepreneur of the Year this year. So I encourage you folks to come out on June 13th at noon and help us celebrate with them. Uh, they will be providing a light lunch, so um, be a good opportunity to network and have lunch and uh, mm -hmm. spend some time with new business owners in our community. Also on June 22nd, which is a Friday evening, um, we're still working on the time, so it'll be sometime between five and six, Art in the Valley on Main Street. Um, it's a new gallery on Main Street, and I encourage you, if you have not dropped in to visit that space yet, please make it uh, make it something that you do, because it is, it's, it's amazing. So they'll be doing a grand opening ribbon cutting um, ceremony. Um, call us as soon as I know what that time is. I'll confirm that with your calendar. And um, But sometime between 5 and 6. So look to our newsletter for more information on that. Uh, and then on June 26th, uh, it's our normal business after hours evening that's hosted by Quality Title. Um, it will be somewhat of a special event because our leadership class will be graduating that evening. Uh, we're graduating 15 individuals from that class this year. Um, it's been a wonderful experience with them, and they've learned a lot about Front Royal Warren County. Um, and so I would encourage you all to come out and um, join us in celebrating their accomplishment and also visiting another one of our um, growing businesses in the community. Quality Title's been open um, for almost two years, and I had a conversation with, that, um, with the owner of that business yesterday, and they're doubling in size. So they're growing and there's lots of good things going on in Front Royal and Warren County and uh, it's a wonderful time to be here. That being said, thank you so much and enjoy your holiday weekend.
Yep. The job fair. Uh -huh. um, is there a list of employers that will be there? There will be. As as we're getting people who are signing up, we're keeping that updated, um, and <coughs> we'll be able to um, provide that to you as needed. And I've had a list for you. Awesome. Okay, great. Thank you. Nikki, just for your interest, and I mentioned it to Kim uh, this past week or two, I received a magazine called Blue Ridge, and it's a, yep. it's a magazine that covers from Virginia, essentially to Florida, mm -hmm. along the Blue Ridge Mountains and so forth, and Front Royal was selected as, as the second best of town uh, by that magazine this past, um, in the past issue, and only behind, um, gosh, that was a place, uh, where the Biltmore is, Asheville, only behind oh, Asheville. Wow. Okay. As, as for artisans and artisan uh, work. Really? Yeah. Okay. And it's called the Blue Ridge? It's called the Blue Ridge. I just pulled it up to make sure I, I said the name right. But it was in this past month's issue. Okay. Um, and it has all the best of the best of <coughs> restaurants, the best of towns for such and such. Mm -hmm. The Front Royal, Virginia, was chosen as number That's two, exciting. only behind. That well, thank you for sharing that. I'll make sure to look for it. <laughs> I sent it on to using Kim. that marketing Kim. as well. Yeah. Kim. <laughs> so thank you. 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 June 19th. All right. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Nikki. Our executive director of property update. You have my report in the packet. Just a few updates. Um, the afternoon we met with Jeremy Camp yesterday and the developers go over their plans to see if he had any initial comments. Um, he made a few comments. They're going to go back and revise the plans. And once they've done that, we'll go to town council to make sure they're okay with it. And then we'll move forward with that. Um, they are going to demo that front portion, um, the annex part, that addition that faces Royal Avenue. Yeah. But the main structure, the historical structure, will Four remain. Walls. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the world, you never they expect that to pull those timbers out of there and then put steel back in it. Well, they may keep those timbers in there. Um, uh, that's what they're working with now. So they'll have to go in and stabilize the building. Oh, and destroyed by fire or something. In yeah. the top, they have to. Um, yeah. So they're working on that, on stabilizing that building and yeah. working with the town to make sure it works. Doug and Joe touched on most everything else in here. <clears throat> the one thing I want to point out under miscellaneous items is I know with the state partnership for, one two, for two prospects, just to compare where we are now with where we were last year, in 2017, we received a total of nine RFPs from the state partnership. Um, to date, in 2018, we have received 15. So things are picking up. The state is really looking at Warren County for some really good companies. Uh, we have made the short list of six of those 15 that I know of. Uh, we're still waiting to hear back from the recent two that we submitted. So just to give you a comparison of how Warren County is getting on the radar of the state partnership. Um, Torre had their grand opening this week of their $45 million expansion. They recognized the EDA for helping with that expansion. Um, we had the Deputy Secretary of Commerce and Trade there. The President of Torrey was there. Um, the Japanese Ambassador um, was at that event. So it was a really good event. And congratulations to Warren County for their yeah. expansion. <laughs> It was not only an expansion, but it was also, um, they created 40 additional jobs. So that's all I have in open. All right, thank you. I don't see anything listed under old business for us. Staff comments, Missy? No. Did you hold it to 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Director comments? Just one, one comment I would have is just wishing Mr. Biggs and Mr. Blink a happy birthday. You guys look, look really good for your age.
Is that when it's for eight or eight thirty? Eight. Eight, 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 eight or any time thereafter. So. Okay, but is that when it's for eight or any time thereafter? Yeah, so so we, we could go ahead and roll on that. All right. Do I need to read something in particular or just open it up as a public hearing? <coughs> Does he need to read anything? Oh, so I guess I, yeah, so at this point just announce it as a public hearing. Okay. Right. Or, uh, because I guess then I left the presentation. Okay. I'll be glad to introduce it. All right. And then Ron has something to read off. I'll follow you. All right. I would like to officially open the public hearing for Valley Health Industrial Revenue Bond. So that has happened. Uh, Mr. Well. Mr. Chairman, I have a uh, disclosure that I need to make, a conflict of interest statement disclosure. <clears throat> I am a member and chairman of the War Memorial Hospital Foundation, but uh, I do not receive any compensation or benefits from such position. Accordingly, I do not have a personal interest in the transaction in accordance with Virginia Code 2.2-3112. I am a member of a group, War Memorial Hospital Foundation, who may have an opinion on the Valley Health Industrial Revenue Bond, but I do not foresee any true effect to me regardless of the outcome of the vote, and I am confident that I can participate in the discussion and vote on this matter fairly, objectively, and in public interest. I ask this disclosure be made part of the minutes of this meeting, please. And that applies to me as well. I said it last at the last meeting, but does he need to read that? He doesn't need to read it. I can have kind of a copy that he can sign and we can put it in the yeah, same. Okay. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Mr. Siggy. Mr. Chairman, I'll just introduce you. So, um, so we have guests here who are going to explain more of the project and you can ask, ask questions. But the, so this is a public hearing um, for one more hospital. Um, and all we know about the new hospital and it's, the public hearings for up to $60 million of hospital revenue bonds. There's an obligated group um, through the Valley Health System. So that you've seen the list of a variety of hospitals. And that's because, again, they'll be able to answer any specific questions, but because it's a nonprofit, um, the obligated group concept, the different hospitals pledge different revenues and they have an agreement back in 1986, the National Trust Agreement, where they agree to this sort of how they're going to finance things and each of the hospitals will obligate. And so this is obligation number 22, which you see as well in the documents. Um, but the public hearing is, is really to tell you more about the project, the amount of bonds. I'll go through when we want to talk through the resolution, there's a minor change in the resolution. I'll hand that out to you after we have to do it again. And that's kind of it. Mr. Gallagher's here and Mike, Mike Graff from uh, their bond council. So uh, if you'd like to let them do an introduction. Welcome. Tell us all about it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I'm Mike Graff from McGuire Woods, and we're serving as bond counsel on the transaction. I have Pete Gallagher with me. He's the CFO for Valley Health. Um, and Dan's done a nice job explaining to you what we had before you, which was describing the application that we submitted to you. Um, Pete's building a new hospital um, in the county and um, seeking to finance it. Um, Going to be financing about half of the costs of the project. And as you know, through the, um, through the EDA, um, he can take what would essentially be a private financing, run it through you as a conduit and achieve a lower interest rate through the tax exemption on the bonds that can be issued for 501c3 organizations when you have the support of a governmental entity to serve as your, your conduit. Um, we did um, notice in both of the newspapers a public hearing for this morning um, and you have before you, um, if it's your pleasure, to approve a resolution that would allow the financing to go forward. It will also be approved by the Board of Supervisors and the, um, and the Town Council before we close on the financing. Pete, do you want to say anything about uh, Valley Health or the or the project, or we could just make ourselves avail available to answer any questions? Oh, sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, good morning. Thank you for having us. And uh, We gave Mr. Baker the day off today, so you can say <laughs> take the full day <laughs> off. <laughs> Uh, but we're excited about the project, and um, I don't know how much you know about it, but um, it's, it's substantial. It's uh, 174,000 square feet, but it's close to $100 million for the whole project, and that does not include the site, since we already own the site. Um, construction will probably start late summer, really, assuming we proceed. Construction will start 
late summer, early fall, probably go about two years into late 2020, and then we'll have um, a grand opening then. Uh, the, the concept that building sort of in a V-shape where on one side is mostly the hospital functions, the other really is a medical office function, the middle will be common functions like uh, dietary and so forth. Um, so we're very excited. We know the old war, the existing war memorial hospital is in need of uh, replacement, so we're glad you've gotten to this point. Um, I'm not the bond lawyer, but my understanding is, and what I often hear in these meetings is a reference that we remain the obligor on the debt, not the authority. So, um, in fact, yesterday, once a year, we have a, what we call a rating agency calls with Standard & Poor's and Moody's. And uh, they went very well yesterday. And although they haven't updated their rating, which they do annually, they indicated they anticipate that to stay where it is, which is A1, A+, plus, which for our size organization is very good. Um, we don't think they'd ever rate us any higher. So um, that's a little profile work, so I didn't appreciate your support. Okay. So any questions? Mr. Chairman, I can answer a couple that I think okay. happened um, earlier. First, first of all, this is the, this is the TEFRA public hearing, so um, we'll take it. Uh, you know, if there's comments from the public, that's, um, you may want to ask if there's any public hearing, want to ask any questions, and then we close the public hearing and the um, di directors can. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone from the public wish to present or comment? Please on the line. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will because we can close the public hearing. Public hearing is now closed. Yeah. And um, so this re the resolution, and I'll pass this out. Um, you may some extra copies. Has a minor change to it that, that what you got. Um, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, the, this, this resolution approves both the public hearing part of it, it recommends to the board of supervisors and the town council to do the public approval that's required by federal and state law. But it also is the final resolution, so it approves the form of the documents and the final official statement, um, although that's still in work. So we'll be making um, changes to that as we go along, but in substance, it's, it's the, the products here. We've got lots of copies here, and we have it all electronic for you as well. And I know you've received a bunch from that. There are a few questions I've gotten in, in between while the, you know, as the application came through, and you've you seen the application. Um, no, one of the questions was, "What is this a bank deal like Christman College? Can the public?" buying these and it's gonna it's this is a public deal as was, was described as going through rating. It's gonna they expect a investment grade rating and, and I think the rating probably won't come until June is my guess. By three June, June or later. And that the, <coughs> there'll be a public sale. Merrill Lynch is one of the underwriters, uh, Ziegler. Uh, Ziegler's lead in Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Right. If anyone's so, interested, contact your financial advisor but Exactly, there you go. So if you want to buy this, don't talk about buying it before you vote. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I tried to explain a little bit about the obligated entities. It is very complex, so don't, you know, if you look at it and go, I don't get this, there's a, um, it is complex um, because of the, the, uh, the various hospitals that have that obligate themselves to the Warren debt. Um, so Warren Memorial Hospital is the borrower but the, there's these obligated entities that the other hospitals. Um, and I guess the other question about rates and amounts and when is all this going to be set, um, as once the rating comes through, um, the underwriters will go to print a final official statement, or preliminary, excuse me, official statement that will go out to the market. At that time, they'll have to, to rate, they'll price the rates and the amounts and the maturities and that's when you'll know what those are. It'll happen, it'll happen sometime in July is the current schedule. And then the closing, I think right now, is scheduled for August. Right. Um, and all that will be set at that time. Um, and let me go through the resolution just a little bit real quick. Um, you've seen this sort of resolution before. This, this is somewhat similar to Christian College, and Mike was involved with that as well. 
Um, there are a couple of things you want to focus on. One is the, um, well, first the change. If you go to page two, the change from the draft that you had in the resolution, um, the first paragraph that has a whereas, there's a parenthetical that says, except a member who abstained from and has not participated in the actions by the authority on this project of the bonds. That parenthetical should have been in the paragraph below, Dan Whitten caught that. Um, and so we've moved that to the, the second paragraph, so it's now after um, no, um, whereas no member of the board directors of the authority, and then that parenthetical has any personal interest in the borrower. So, um, another thing that it's, it's worthy of, of sort of focusing on that's a little different than what you've seen in the past, or not different, but more important for what you do, is um, paragraph 10 on page 4 and the top of page 5. That's the paragraph where the authority's fees are covered, and there's a reference to the one time lump sum fee for here. And, and of course, there will be responsible for any expenses and authority expenses or anything that might occur in the future. But as far as the authority fee is concerned, it's a one time fee. I think that's my good that mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So there, will, there, there could be expenses in the future. Sometimes the IRS audits things, sometimes. This, you know, this has, has MSRB, SEC, so there could be things, and that would be covered under the, um, by them as well. The, the, that paragraph also, at the, at the bottom of that paragraph, again, at the top of page five, um, there's a reference to the fact that, um, that you, the authority's not liable, nor is the county or the town, so these bonds, as Mr. Gallagher said, they, they're, this is solely based on the revenues and whatever's pledged by the hospital so, and Valley Health. Um, in paragraph 12, which is on that same page five, there's a reference to the um, indemnification um, by the borrower that if there's any damages or any claims that the borrower will identify um, the authority. Um, Paragraph 15 references this allocation that has to be done um, by the, between the town and the county. And paragraph 17 at the bottom, page five, also makes it clear that while you're approving everything right now, it's still contingent on the Board of Supervisors and Town Council approving at their meetings. They're the ones who do the public approval, you're the ones who do the public hearing under state, state law and complying with federal law. Um, paragraph 18 um, makes it clear this is the most important for you and this will be in the documents that no member of this authority or staff um, is liable, has any personal liability on this. And we'll make, that'll be in the documents, it's in generally in the documents, but we'll make sure everything has that in there. Um, and finally, paragraph 19 makes it clear again that there's no debt, no liability of the authority, the county, or the town, except again the borrowers um, revenue instead of pledge. And that is a, like a full description. So I know that's a lot, so I apologize for being worried. But any any questions from you that? Now we've, had, we've had an opportunity for quite a while to take a look at this, ask questions, and clarify anything that we've, that we've had. Um, coming to an agreement on the, on the fees was something that we did. Um, it's not something we do real often in terms of this kind of thing, but it is, it is a, it's one of the actions that an EDA can take that helps a community out. And that's, that's what we're glad to be a part of that part of it. But we're, we're simply one step in this whole process to get the approvals done, too. That's a, a big part of this. So there's no further comments or thought on that. We, we need to read the um, roll call. Just, do we need to vote on it and then do a disapproval, or do we need to read it? <coughs> well, just a vote, just a roll call. Okay. So, <coughs> Just a motion to approve the resolution as, as presented. As presented. As presented. Okay. All right. 
Could I get a motion to approve the resolution for this bond as presented? Sir? Second. Second. All right. Is there any further discussion on that? A motion and a second. And Missy, could you do a roll call vote, please? Second, please go around. Llewellyn oh, I. Llewellyn oh. I. <laughs> Addison I. Blanton I. Dresher I. Big J. Rutland I. That passes. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Let me see if I say you should use it by the secretary. Thank you, secretary. Thank you. Absolutely. I brought that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to sign that. Do you have another one? I, I brought a bunch of stuff, which I welcome. First of all, I want to thank um, Dan and Jennifer for all their help. Um, but I did have some signatures. I can leave them with you, Dan, or I can excuse myself for. And I can leave them with you. One thing I didn't give Mike a chance to correct anything I said, so <laughs> <laughs> I learned everything I know from Dan, so yeah. Yeah. there's nothing, uh, nothing to be corrected. But I'm happy to stay help with the signatures, or sure. if, you have, if you have a closed session, then I should excuse myself. Um, from the first we do have a closed session. So I can, I can get a sign. <laughs> I'll use your seat. 
jokes, no nothing. No, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 it's a very serious crowd. <laughs> Obviously not enough coffee. <laughs> Sherlock, we are now enclosed. 